This is the recorded version of a talk presented at VLDB 2011 titled Databases will visualize queries too. I'm Wolfgang Gatterbauer from University of Washington in the time of this talk and now at Carnegie Mellon University. The talk will argue that we should develop tools that visualize existing queries because such tools can also make it easy for users to compose new queries. Let's see why. Query composition is the process by which users transform the search intent into an appropriate SQL query. And this process is hard. Hard here doesn't necessarily mean difficult, but definitely time consuming. It often takes more time than query validation. It's also pointed out by another paper in the same session by Nand and Shagadish. So if you want to optimize the overall time needed for my user first having some search intent to the actual query result, it makes very much sense to focus on speeding up this essential step of query composition. To address this, several systems were recently proposed, which can be generally classified as query management. The idea here is to leverage an existing query log and to let users browse and reuse those queries. Because starting from existing templates is usually easier than starting from scratch. Yet this requires that users understand what queries do. They need to interpret existing queries somewhere in the process. The difficulty is that query interpretation is hard as well. We even use it for testing purposes. For example, we often ask our undergraduate students in tests, here's a SQL query, what does it do? And that's not trivial. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a good test question. So the challenge is, how can we help users understand existing queries really fast? Because this could enable a new user interaction mode with queries and make it easier and faster to compose new queries. Let me illustrate this challenge next. Assume we browse through a log of five queries. And for each query, we want to quickly understand its intent because we want to choose a query as a template for our own new query. So this is actually pretty hard. Understanding the meaning of an existing piece of code, especially if it's annotated, is far from trivial. And that's why software developers often have a preference to start from scratch instead of taking the time to understand existing code written by somebody else. We repeat the exercise, but now in addition to the SQL query on the left, we add on the right an appropriate visual representation of the query. And again, while we browse, we want to quickly understand the intent of each query. Are we now better able to perceive certain patterns, certain SQL patterns? Let's take this query here, number five. This query asks for all actors in the IMDB movie database with bacon number two. And let's look on the right side. The only thing we need to know here is that the dashed line means not exists. And then the pattern of this query becomes immediately clear. So it asks, select all actors who play in a movie with an actor who plays in a movie with Kevin Bacon, who, but who do not play in a movie with Kevin Bacon and who are not Kevin Bacon themselves. And that's the definition of Bacon number two, just as the more familiar earliest number. So can it be that if we see and understand this pattern once, we will always again recognize it and very fast so. Note here that the visualization implicitly includes the schema of the tables, which is not easy to see from the SQL query on the left. So the thesis of this talk is that query visualization can greatly speed up query interpretation. And furthermore, that is actually the best option among several to help users quickly understand queries. What are those options? There are four principal options to help users interpret an existing query. First, we can make SQL as readable as possible. Second, we can show query results. This is something proposed by Olsen et al. to quickly illustrate the semantics of operators in a data flow program. Third, we can translate queries into natural language. This is something currently pursued by Unidis et al. And fourth, we can visualize queries. Now these four are not the only possible routes. If you want to be exhaustive, there are always more options, but these four are really the main ones currently pursued. Now there's a difference that sets query visualization apart from the other three. And this difference has to do with the speed by which we humans can make sense of the information presented. And also remember, it is a picture is worth a thousand words, which is especially true for logical constructs and relations between objects and the attributes. Think of Venn diagrams. For example, 
if we ever forgot the relation between NP, NP half, NP complete, co NP, then the right representation will help us quickly remember those relations between the concepts. It is far easier to memorize and helps us recognize previously seen patterns, relations. This idea that visualizations can help us quickly recognize patterns is nothing new at all. It just has only recently gotten some focus in the database community for helping users understand and see patterns in large amounts of data and information. For well-known usage, think about Many Eyes by IBM or Hans Rösling's often watched TED talk on visualizing country statistics. Now, query visualization is similar in the sense that we also want to help users quickly understand something complex, only queries instead of data. And it's also related to visual query languages, which is a database research area with a long history. The focus there is to conceive query languages that allow users to visually compose a query. However, there's a fundamental difference. And this difference results from a fundamental asymmetry in the bandwidth, in the channel capacity of the user interaction between users and queries. And this is that visual query composition is inherently sequential. Just as drawing a figure in PowerPoint, we need to interactively design visual constructs, connect graphical elements. The whole visual interaction is quite cumbersome. And let me make this point uh, more clearly. What is the reason for me showing you visuals instead of bullet points in PowerPoint? But the hope is that visuals get the message through more easily. That doesn't mean that it took me less time to prepare those slides, quite in contrary. And the reason is that visual composition is hard, not visual interpretation. In other words, interpreting a two-dimensional graphics is the only modus in which a user can act on information in parallel and thus fast. All other modi are inherently sequential. We read and write text sequentially, and we also build PowerPoint slides sequentially. But we can interpret them fast, and this is why we use visual slides in the first place. So a suggestion of this talk, and this is a major point, about why visual query languages have not found widespread adoption is that visual composition is an inherently sequential process. Some of you may have rolled eyeballs f for the statement, a picture is worth 1,000 words. It has been used so often in the past, and maybe it was misunderstood. Can it be that the saying should be, a picture says more than 1,000 words, but creating a picture needs more than 1,000 seconds? And if this is the case, then maybe visual constructs may not be ideal for helping us compose new queries, but they're ideal for helping us interpret existing queries. Given this background, what is the challenge? The challenge for query visualization is quite similar to that of any interface uh, language design problem. What are the right abstractions that help us achieve our goals? So for query visualization, that means what is the appropriate visual alphabet which allows users to quickly understand the query's intent, which can be easily learned by users, and which can express a large fraction of SQL. In addition, we also need an automatic translation from SQL to the visualization, including a visually appealing automatic arrangements of the components of the visualization. In the second part of this talk, we'll look at QueryVis, a query visualization system that was developed in collaboration with Jonathan Danapaumita, a former undergraduate student at University of Washington and now a graduate student at University of Michigan. In particular, we will look at some of the design decisions which we made when developing our language. Upfront, there's no need to understand and pass all the SQL queries shown in the slides. I will always point out the main takeaways. Our visualization was foremost inspired by a body of work on diagrammatic reasoning systems, which is reasoning by means of visual representations. Researchers here have been working on means for conveying logical statements in a simple and intuitive way. So here are two examples. This body of work is itself inspired by oil and Venn diagrams and also notably by the influential existential graph notation by Charles Sanders Peirce. The main idea here is to use topological properties, such as enclosure, spatial arrangement, to represent logical expressions and set theoretic relationships, mainly from a relation. 
So how does this relate to queries? Well, if we focus on bag semantics, we can translate most common queries into the first order logic representation. So on the left side, we see a SQL query. On the right side in green, we see the first order logic representation of this query. So now we are in, in logic. So our first design decision is, we start from this logical representation of a SQL query and then try to represent it with topological properties. When it comes to visualizations, we are all more or less familiar with UML representations of database schemas. While they may appear in slight variations, they all follow some simple visual idea. So our design decision two is we start from these familiar visual database constructs for schemas and the simple conjunctive query is not supposed to look much different from a database schema. Here, we see a simple conjunctive query with the intent to find persons that frequent some bar that serve some drink alike. On the upper left in gray, we see the schema, below in red, the SQL statement, and on the right, the visualization. So note here that the visualization also helps us to immediately understand the relevant parts of the schema and is in this respect very similar to data log, but in contrast to data log, we show only those attributes which are relevant for the query. So for example, the relation serves does not show the attribute price because it doesn't contribute any meaning to the particular query at hand. So next, let's look at a query with quite similar intent, but slightly different. Find persons that frequent some bar that serves only drinks the like. Note here that the SQL statement has become quite more complex. In proportion, our visualization has only marginally increased in complexity. And the only thing we need to know up front is that the dashed box means not exist. So let's read this query. Select persons that frequent some bar that do not serve any drink which is not liked by this person. So our third design decision is that we gradually extend the known visual metaphors for conjunctive queries, database schemas, to more complex queries. And the fourth one is that we also assign an implicit reading order to the error. Given we have a logical representation of the query, we can further manipulate it and, for example, change a double negation to a positive statement, which results in this visualization on the upper right. Here the double line means logical all. So let's read it together. Select all persons that frequent some bar so that all drinks served by this bar are liked by this person. If we ignore all the behind the scene logical representation and transformation that's going on, and only keep in mind that a double line represents all and a dashed line not, then these representations are arguably quicker to read and easier to memorize than the original SQL query on the left. So our design decision five is that we perform limited logical transformations that can further simplify the representation. The next design decision is possibly the most controversial, but also one that lies at the very heart of the difference between query composition and query interpretation. We decided to overload our representation. So for example, these two SQL queries are both represented by the visualization on the right. So they're not the same. They give the same query results, except if column B of the table S contains a null value. And similarly, these two queries are the same, except if the table T is empty. So our design decision six was that in order to achieve a minimal visual complexity, we overload the visualization and allow possible ambiguities. And the reason is that we don't understand our tool to be used for debugging queries, but there's some kind of filter. We want to quickly browse for a large amount of queries and look only at those more carefully, which catch our attention. And the filter means allow few false positives, but no false negatives. We have an online demonstration of our tool available from our webpage queries.com and we invite you to visit it. It is a very simple interface. You pass the schema and you pass the query and the tool shows you the visualization. Note that the schema is actually not important. What we need could actually be inferred from the query alone. And 
this is an important observation because what we show here is that query visualization can actually be a very low overhead to existing database systems. We do not need to dig down deeply into the details of a database schema. No, we only need a query and this could be easily breathed from an existing tool like SQL Server Management Studio. So important here, we do not replace the existing and established mode of interaction. We just enhance it. What are some of the main open questions? First, how can we visualize more complex SQL constructs? While we have some ideas for groupings, we don't have any search for outer joint sorting, and can we ever meaningfully visualize arithmetic expressions? Second, what is the appropriate level of abstraction? As pointed out before, we focus on the query intent, so our goal is to be minimally visual complex. This comes at the expense of ambiguity, at the other end of the abstraction spectrum is, for example, the query graph model developed for Starburst. Here the goal is to visualize query plans. And visual query languages are somewhere in between because they need to provide a one-to-one -one correspondence between a visualization and the query. They cannot allow any ambiguities and also need to make explicit some of the intricacies of the SQL syntax. Now we argue that query visualization works best as a filter and we need to be on the far right side of the spectrum, but is this really so? And is there any way to come up with some general visualization that can sit anywhere on this spectrum? So that allows to quickly understand the intent, but then also provides a full debugging capacity by going down from more abstract to less abstract. Third, what are actually the appropriate visual constructs? In QueryVis, we use an implicit reading order provided by the errors, and we also allow simple logical transformations. Perhaps it's better to provide a better one-to-one -one correspondence to the original SQL query and make also the nesting explicit. Or perhaps we can overload the errors even more and do completely without the boxes representing the logical statements. Or we can come up with something completely different, which for some reason turns out to help users to quicker understand our query. Again, our design decision too was to basically start from non-UML representations. Perhaps that's not the best way to go. Fourth, since large queries can become quite complex, can we provide query understanding at different granularities? That means for the whole query, but then also to zoom into subparts of the query like with a geographic map. Fifth, if we can do this, can we use this visualization to help users understand individual fragments of queries and they could then build them together like with a Lego box. Sixth, are different visualizations better suited for different audiences? Seventh, how should we place the visual elements, components of a query to be best understood and read by the users? Eighth, can we come up with one single benchmark for query understanding? TPCH currently works with automatically created synthetic data sets. Can we identify the most important SQL patterns and then create a system that tests these patterns over synthetically generated or composed mixed database schemas and then crowdsource the whole evaluation on Amazon Turk? Let me wrap up here. The talk has argued that query visualization can also facilitate query composition and can thus enable a complete new interaction between users and queries. Importantly, not by replacing the existing mode of composition, but by enhancing it, by allowing users to start from templates instead from scratch. And since this can considerably improve the usability of our existing database infrastructure, the vision of this talk is that databases will visualize queries too. Thank you.